Glad to have you join us on the newsroom. I am Simisola Adigo. Minister of Labor and Employment Chris Ngige on Wednesday stated that the federal government would look into the threat by the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The minister also said that most of the union's grievances were domiciled in the ministries of Education and Communications and Digital Economy. Meanwhile, the chairman, Asu Futo Chinedu Ihejireka, accused the federal government of consistently failing to honor the Memoranda of Understanding and Memoranda of Action it signed with the union since 2009. The union said at a press conference on the campus that the federal government was forcing it to shut down all public universities nationwide. A bill seeking to prescribe a jail term of seven years and or a fine of 500 million naira narrowly passed second reading at the House of Representatives on Wednesday. Leading the debate on the bill, Sergio Ogun of the People's Democratic Party noted that the objective of the proposal was to amend the act so as to make provision for sanctions against any public officer who violates the provisions of the act, especially Section 46. The lawmaker urged members of the House to look at the merits of the bill and let it pass in the interest of the nation, which is currently going through a trying time and requires drastic steps to bring it back on its footing. The House of Representatives has asked the federal government to declare national emergency on incessant ritual killings across the country. Expressing worry about the trend, the lawmakers called on the National Orientation Agency, as well as parents, heads of schools, religious leaders and the media to undertake a campaign to change the negative. It also asked the Inspector General of Police Usman Baba Alkali to take urgent steps to increase surveillance and intelligence gathering with a view to fishing out, arresting and prosecuting the perpetrators. In COVID update, the World Health Organization has asked rich countries to take action and end the COVID-19 pandemic as a global health emergency. According to the WHO, wealthy nations need to assist low- and middle-income countries to procure test kits, treatments and vaccines. The agency launched the appeal on Wednesday, requesting 55 wealthy countries to contribute $23 billion in funding. The Senate has passed for second reading the Pension Reform Act Amendment Bill, which seeks to make funds in the retirement savings account under the contributory pension scheme more easily accessible to retirees. In a statement on the sponsor of the bill, Senator Ali Wamako of APC Sokoto North, the proposed amendments to the Pension Reform Act 2014 were to provide for a definite and reasonable percentage a retiree can withdraw from their retirement savings account. According to him, the proposals of the Bill 62 also provide succor to retirees in the delay and other difficulties they stumble upon in withdrawing their savings from their RSA. An international two persons, including a soldier, have been confirmed dead in Colombia when a rebel's motor motorized scooter exploded near the entrance to a military base in the city of Grenada. According to General Antonio Beltran, a motorized scooter tried to enter the military base before exploding and the soldier who died had blocked the vehicle from advancing further into the compound. However, there was no confirmation by authorities that the perpetrator had been killed during the attack. In sports, Portuguese coach Jose Pacero has stated that he never confirmed to the Nigerian Football Federation that he was going to accept the Super Eagles job after the just-concluded Africa Cup of Nations AFCON. In December, the NFF stated that the new appointment of Pacero as the new head coach of the Eagles following the termination of Gennot Ross contract and added that the former Saudi Arabia coach will take over the team after the AFCON. However, the NFF on Monday announced that Egwavoyen would remain in charge of the Eagles and would be assisted by former under-20 coach Emmanuel Aminike, Salisu Yusuf and Joseph Yobo. That's all on the newsroom at this time. Join us again for more news stories. Thank you for watching.